Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The number of people here in the United States getting a COVID-19 vaccine is rising. But even if you're fully vaccinated, more shots could be in your future. We'll tell you what we're learning about COVID-19 booster shots. And we're following two breaking stories here at noon. Governor Whitmer just updated the state on efforts to get people back into the office. But first, the manhunt for former basketball star Keith Appling comes to an end. We'll tell you what we're learning about his capture. And that tops our news here at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Everod Kasumi. Police tell us that Appling was arrested by Michigan State Police at about 1030 this morning without incident. Victor Williams joins us now live this afternoon. And Victor, I understand that he was found in Chelsea. Yes, it was in Chelsea about an hour and a half ago on Commerce Drive. Just like you said, he was arrested without incident, but police did find a handgun on him during his arrest. Now, this two day manhunt, it came to an end this morning at 1030. Police have been looking for Appling for his alleged involvement in the shooting death of a 66 year old on Whitcomb this past Saturday night around 710. Officers believe this was the result of a very heated verbal altercation that turned into murder. The Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office did confirm that the deceased was 66 year old Clyde Evans, whose sources are saying may be related to Appling. Police, however, are working to confirm that information at this point in time, but this just adds to the long criminal history for Appling. In the past, he has served time for resisting and obstructing a police officer and also carrying a concealed weapon and even heroin possession. But once again, Keith Appling has now been taken into custody after being arrested in Chelsea, Michigan. We will, however, keep you updated on any charges that may come about. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, thank you for the update there. We're also following another breaking news story, this time out of Grand Rapids, where Governor Whitmer just updated the state on efforts to get people back in the office. Here's the latest. The law no longer requires remote work, and Myosha will integrate the latest guidelines from the CDC. This means that fully vaccinated workers can go without masks and social distancing in the office. The governor and others reinforce the importance of vaccination to keep people safe. The safe, effective vaccines are the main reason that we are in this moment and emerging from this pandemic. The CDC's updated mask guidance that was announced two weeks ago was supported by data that vaccines give us robust protection against infection and serious illness, and that vaccinated people do not pose a significant risk of passing the virus on to others. Under these revised emergency rules, employers can now allow fully vaccinated employees to work normally without masks or distancing requirements. The cleaning and sanitization requirements have been softened accordingly, and industry-specific requirements have been eliminated. We're going to post the updated Myosha guidelines for you on our website. You can go to clickondetroit.com for that. Also, during her conference, Governor Whitmer repeated her two-step plan to reopen the state, relaxing restrictions on June 1st and ending almost all of the COVID-19 orders on July 1st. And you can see the plan there on your screen. Also of note, in-person learning continues today in the Detroit Public Schools Community District. The district paused in-person learning back in April after a spike in COVID-19 cases here in the region. School officials approved the use of a safety matrix last week. Data now considered for future school closures will include vaccination rates, data from weekly testing, and infection rates in Metro Detroit. This afternoon, we're expecting new Michigan coronavirus vaccination and case numbers, and that'll be a two day total Sunday's and today's numbers. On the national front, the United States has passed 33,118,000 coronavirus cases with more than 589,000 deaths from the virus. The average for new cases dropped below 30,000 per day last week, and that's actually the lowest since June of last year. Now, because of that, Americans were out this past weekend and gathering like it was 2019 pre pandemic from basketball arenas to city streets. But the good news has also been met with some new concerns. The CDC is investigating possible heart problems in a few young vaccine recipients. Tom Costello has this report from Bethesda, Maryland. 
Good day. Just a few days before we get the kickoff to the Memorial Day weekend and America is already starting to reopen and really some very encouraging reasons for America to start taking off the masks and enjoying the freedom. Listen to these stats. Uh, COVID cases at their lowest point in a year right now, down 20% last week compared to the week before. Hospitalizations down 15%, deaths down 14%, and more than 60% of American adults have now received at least one dose. And so with that, we have seen this past weekend, it really felt more like a return to 2019 pre-pandemic normals. Parades, sporting events, beaches were busy, concerts, graduations, restaurants were packed. All of that as Americans increasingly start to feel like they are protected and they can get back to normal. That said, the CDC is paying very close attention right now to a very small number of cases involving teenagers developing a heart condition. Maybe or maybe not after the second dose of the vaccine. They're still investigating this, but it's an inflammation of the heart muscle called myocarditis. The symptoms can include chest pain and fatigue and, and an arrhythmia. Uh, it is not at all yet clear whether there's a link. And the CDC says the kids who have had some symptoms were very mild symptoms. But the bottom line on this Monday before Memorial Day is that the country is really starting to get back to a, a sense of normalcy more than a year, 14 months since the COVID pandemic really uh, just burst onto the scene here in the United States. I'm Tom Costello in North Bethesda, Maryland. NBC News, back to you. All righty, Tom, thank you. Meanwhile, Pfizer has administered its first COVID-19 booster shot. The pharmaceutical company is studying a third dose of the vaccine and a vaccine candidate, a pneumococcal vaccine candidate. Now, this vaccine helps prevent illnesses like pneumonia. The first participants received their shots today. The trial is looking at safety when the vaccines are co-administered and will follow up to will follow up six months after. 600 adults over the age of 65 are in that trial group. Some will receive both shots. Others will receive only one and a placebo. The trials are coming, though, after vaccine makers say that people should prepare to get booster shots in the future. It's still unclear if they're needed or how long the protection from a COVID-19 vaccine regimen lasts. But researchers and health officials suspect that it might wean after about a year or more. Both the Pfizer and Moderna CEOs have come out and said that they believe booster shots are going to be needed within about 8 to 12 months from your first dose because of the data that they're seeing. Now, we can only assume that means because of the immunity that they're following from people who were in their clinical trials, but they haven't released that data just yet. The CDC maintains the need for and timing of a possible booster has not been established just yet. Well, let's turn our attention to the forecast now as we give you a live look outside through our downtown Detroit sky cam. Our good friend meteorologist Brandon Rue back with us this afternoon for a look at uh, what we can expect today and beyond. It's been every bit of a Monday during the morning hours with sort of gray, dull skies, but starting to get some patches of blue and temps are responding almost 70 in Monroe and Howell, 68 Port Huron, 65 still at Metro. We've watched uh, some showers through Flint Saginaw toward uh, Lapeer County just evaporates almost entirely, but some light showers up north, a better chance late afternoon, early evening, but only in a few spots. So we'll see afternoon highs around 78 and after 3 p.m. or so, watch out for some spotty rain and thunder showers. Again, we're seeing some pockets of clearing, so some blue skies coming your way. The cold front that came through yesterday and brought the showers returning as a warm front, which will be the spark for, again, some late afternoon rain and thunder. We're flirting with 90, and then we're tracking storms also. Much more comfy air to talk about. The local forecasters app has it all for you right now and is your greatest weapon and tool always uh, any time of the day, but especially during crazy weather. And we do have some of that in the seven day. The local forecasters app is free. Just search W D I V Everett. All righty, Brandon, thank you so much. In other news this afternoon, one man is dead and another is in the hospital. This is all after a shooting overnight in Detroit. It happened on American Street right near Tyreman and Livernoy. Police say that a 45 year old man died from his injuries. A 52 year old man was also shot. His injuries are non life threatening. And right now we're waiting to hear word from police and what they believe led up to this shooting. 
Over to Dearborn now, an investigation there is underway after a break in at a jewelry store. This happened on Schaefer, right in between Warren and Ford Roads. Police say the thief got away with a few thousand dollars worth of stuff. They believe the suspect hit other locations in the area as well. So to come here at noon, new information from Wuhan, China, revives the COVID-19 origin debate again. So we'll tell you what we're learning about potential early infections. That's coming up after the break.